Uh, Representative Sims is going to make a motion real quick. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we suspend the rules and go ahead without a quorum. We'll have some others coming in right after this, so we're on wait. So, okay. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Like signs? Okay. We'll go ahead and proceed. And Representative Epps, if you want to come on up. We, just for everybody's information, we've already had a hearing on this particular bill, and it is by substitute. House Bill 763 by substitute LC 335542S. And uh, the mic is yours. And uh, just briefly, tell us where we are and where we're going. I will, sir. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, House Bill 763 by substitute. Basically, we're the, we're the same in Section 1. Mr. Chairman, I'll point out that... Uh, uh, in the original bill, line 17, after the word degree, uh, the substitute reads, provided, however, that no branch of the Georgia Military College shall offer any baccalaureate of applied science degree program that is currently being offered by an institution of the Board of Regents of the University System of Georgia, which is located in the same county as such branch. That's the uh, difference in the verbiage, and basically, you know, everything else is the same. You know, we feel this program will support Georgia in the complete College Georgia Initiative, and students with an associate of applied science degree will have a pathway towards another degree without any cost to the state. Okay. Thank you, and this is this is something we've been working on now for a couple of years, and obviously we'll never get an agreement on everything, so we can agree to disagree. Um, and if any members of the committee has any questions now, feel free to ask. Anybody? Okay, do I hear a motion? Second. A motion and a second. Any further discussion? All right, all in favor, signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed, like sign? So thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank all you, right. committee. Representative Barr. Over here. Just to give you an update on uh, Representative Barr's bill, and you probably have had time to look at it, we do have a consensus with all the, I think, the librarians in the state of Georgia over the interim, we met uh, seven times and finally worked out everything. I think the librarians met in Augusta and came up with an agreement. Uh, this is the best route for them to go. And, uh, and what I thought would be fairly easy was very complex, but uh, Representative Barr has done a good job. And we do have it finalized now, and I'll turn it over to Representative Barr to present it to the committee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I am deeply appreciative for your help in this and um, leading a freshman representative through uh, a simple bill. Uh, let me first uh, mention that, follow up what you said, the, the Library Council of Georgia did meet. Um, they have all requested this. There were a few um, at the beginning of last year that um, we're not sure about it, and at this point, we do have a consensus among all the libraries on this bill. ACCG is supporting this. Um, your county commissioners will definitely be happy with this bill. What this bill does is, um, in 2013, the libraries paid a percentage of the payroll um, to the health insurance. In 2012, that went from a percentage of what they paid their employees to a flat rate. Um, to anyone working over 17 and a half hours in a library. Um, what this bill does straightforward is it, is, is it takes that 17 and a half and it increases it to 30, which would be on, in, in parity with other employees um, in the school district, the, the, the lunchroom workers, cafeteria folks, uh, maintenance and janitorial staff. That insurance requirement does not kick in until you've worked 30 hours. Um, the reason the librarians are a little bit different, uh, they were in a different code section under teachers, 
And so what this bill does is it, 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 takes, it takes that and it makes it that they may not, uh, the libraries are not mandated uh, to, to provide that until they work 30 hours. You might want to mention the new health care law, uh, Representative Barr played into this quite a bit, and uh, and there is a fiscal note. Do you want to explain the fiscal note? Everybody should have a fiscal note. took a while to get it, but we got it yesterday, and uh, if you want to hit the highlights on the sure. fiscal note, feel free to do so. Uh, the fiscal note came back, and it would, um, there, there is no note to the state. Um, it, it could save the counties up to $10,116 per employee. Um, and, and basically what it boils down to is the libraries could not afford this. Your counties can't afford this. Um, and so the majority of those folks that had a, a decent part-time job that were retired or, or school folks that worked 20 to 25 hours, up to 30 hours in the past, um, Basically, now all the libraries had to cut those folks back to 17 and a half. So they lost some valuable folks because those those people wanted to work more than 17 and a half hours. So give them a lot more continuity in their staff, um, cut down on, on their turnover and training of folks. Um, let's see, the fiscal note. The, the local government impact is this would be a $1.6 million annual savings. That's the best I could estimate. Correct. Okay. Any questions for Representative Barr on this? Okay. Representative Holcomb. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I, I just want to make sure I understand it. Um, how is it by raising it back up to 30 hours that this is going to benefit the um, librarians and that the libraries won't just make them work 29 hours to avoid this obligation? This is this is spawned from. I appreciate your question, from from my libraries, and and they said, look, we we have folks that are good folks that would like to work more hours. Most of them are retirees in in our current situation, who have insurance in other areas, um, but they want to work more than 17 and a half hours, so that would alleviate those those trials that those folks are going through, trying to look for other jobs. Um, wanting to work more hours, but enjoying the library benefits. I, I'm not answering your question, I can tell. Representative Holcomb, we have vented this thing and vented it and vented it, and this is the best uh, proposition we could come out with. Um, your, your librarians all over the state support this. In, the, in this version, uh, the way the law was existing, uh, they had to offer the benefit. So, what they're going to do is either put them on full time, or eliminate a lot of the part time positions because of the revenue problems they have in all the counties, county governments at this time. Okay. Anybody else? Okay. What's the mood of the committee? Uh, I got a motion, got a second. Any further discussion? Okay. Yeah. By substitute. By substitute, uh, LC 335423 s Okay. I'll call for the vote. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed like sign? Okay. Representative Holcomb, did you vote? Okay. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Okay, we have something to hand out to the members. Uh, back behind you, you have a handout for the private colleges. Have you handed them out? Okay, you've already done it. Okay, very good. All right, anything else to come up before the committee? Okay, we stand adjourned. Thank you.